Okay, we'll go ahead and get started. Good afternoon, everybody, and uh, we hope everybody had a, a very Merry Christmas, and we thank you for joining us today. Um, whether you're at work on lunch or whether you are uh, uh, just have the rest of the week off, whatever it might be, but we're glad you could take time out of your day to join us for Pay Yourself First. And so we'll just go right ahead and get started. We're going to break this module into two mo into this uh, section into two modules, and uh, we'll do the first one today. It's going to take about a half hour, and we'll learn some very good things about paying yourself first. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, saving money, of course, is an important part of building your financial future. And so this module, basically, it's designed to give you some tips to help you get started. It will also show you how your money can grow, when you save, and we're going to give you some important information about saving, and then again, next month, about some investment products as well. All right. So after completing this module, basically, you'll be able to do this, the following. Number one, you'll, you're going to learn you know, why it is important to save. Second, you're going to be able to determine goals for saving money. Third, we're going to identify and talk about some savings options. Fourth, we're going to determine which savings options will help you reach your savings goals. And then next month, we're going to talk about, continuing on the screen, recognize which investment options are right for you. We're then going to list ways to save for retirement. And finally, we're going to list ways to save for large expenses uh, large expense goals, rather, including, you know, perhaps a child's college tuition or a car or a home purchase or even that dream vacation. All right, so that's the objectives of the course. And, of course, you know, what, what do you think when it means to pay yourself first to get started here? Well, paying yourself first basically means that when you get a paycheck, a tax refund, a cash gift, or any other money, you should put some of that money in a savings account before you pay your bills. Pay yourself first. Now, um, and, and again, a lot of people think of, yeah, I'm going to pay myself out of my regular paycheck, but they don't think about the other things like the tax refund, paying itself first out of that, or if you get a cash gift or whatever else might come as a surprise, a bonus. So that's what we're going to focus on today. No matter where it comes from, pay yourself first whenever you get some extra, some funds. Now, why would you want to save money or pay yourself first before paying your bills? Well, there's many reasons to pay yourself first. You can save money towards goals that you've identified. Uh, you can improve your standard of living. You can learn to manage money better. And you will have money for emergencies. Now, moving on, what are some of the things you might want to save money for? Uh, some major expenses people save for include the following. Unexpected events like loss of a job, uh, car repair, or some unexpected medical bills that might come up. They might save for a down payment for a house, a car, or other large purchase. Third, they might save for education, either for themselves or for their children. A big one, saving for retirement. And finally, maybe they're just saving again, like we talked about, for that vacation. All right. Next thing we're going to talk about then is many people spend all the money they make. However, saving money is important, as we talked about. You may believe you do not have enough money to start saving. You might say, where am I going to start? Yet, there are some things you can do to start saving money right now. And let's go ahead and we're going to go over some of those, some savings tips. Number one, first of all, consider needs versus wants. Think about the items you purchase on a regular basis. These add up, of course. Where can you save? Uh, for example, do you eat out at restaurants a lot? Maybe can you cut back a little bit? Uh, can you cut back on daily expenses? That stop at the 7-Eleven for coffee, candy, soda, or cigarettes. Do you have services maybe you do not need that you can cut back and use the savings from there? Uh, cable, television is a great example. All right, that's number one. So consider your needs versus wants. Number two, use direct deposit or automatic transfer to savings. When you get paid, put a portion in savings through direct deposit or automatic transfer. If you have a checking account, you might have to sign up um, to have money moved into your savings account every month. But again, what you don't see, you will not miss, believe me. Or you may purchase U.S. savings bonds through payroll deduction as well. So those are all great ideas. Use your direct deposit, again, or automatic transfer to savings. 
Third, pay your bills on time. Very important. We've talked about this in prior seminars. Get that calendar out and have that calendar set. Remember the good rule, five days before. All right. So uh, if you pay your bills on time, this will save the added expense of late fees, extra finance charges, disconnection fees for utilities, uh, fees to establish reconnection or connection, excuse me, if your service is disconnected, the cost of eviction, and repossession and the cost affiliated with that. So again, very important, pay your bills on time. All those extra fees you might have to pay, you won't have to if you do that. Number four, consider opening, opening a checking account at a bank or a credit union instead of using those check cashing stores. Now you might pay 2% or more at a check cashing store each check you cash. 2% of a $500 check is what? $10. Now this can easily add up to several hundred dollars in fees each, each year. Look at it this way, if you get paid uh, 24 times, you know, every two weeks roughly throughout the year, then that's going to add up to what, $240 based on that $10 example. You could put that in savings. All right, if you'd like more information about checking accounts, uh, you can uh, review our Check It Out module on our website that we've done previously. All right, let's move on. Number five. Put some money into a savings account if you get a raise or a bonus from your employer. Great idea. Number six, keep making the monthly payments to yourself once you've paid off a loan. You can save or invest the money for your future goals. I've got a car payment that's going to be paid off finally in about five months. So it's about between you know, about $500 a month. I'm going to take that and add it to the amount we're already putting in savings out of my wife's direct deposit. Um, and start putting that aside. And then eventually, hopefully, just pay car cash for my next car. All right. Seven, save at least a part of any cash gift you receive. If you get $50, save $10 out of it. Use the $40 for whatever else you want, but save $10. All right. Avoid debt that does not help build long-term financial security, uh, including loans for a vacation, clothing, and dinners out in restaurants. Now, what are some examples of debt that do help you build long-term financial security? Those could be, again, paying for college education for either you or your child, buying or remodeling a house, or buying a car for work transportation. All right. Number nine so on the tips. Pay off high-interest credit cards or other loans as soon as you can. Moving on, number 10. Um, Save your change at the end of the day and then deposit it in your savings account either weekly or monthly. Again, uh, my wife and I, we have a change jar on our anything and any extra change we throw in there. Every three, four months we take it. They even have those coin stars at some of the local grocery stores. You take them all, you dump them in. It's magic. It does the counting for you. No more one, two, three, four. And it does the magic for you, adds it all up, gives you a receipt. You get the cash for it. Uh, and then you can we put that in our savings account every couple of months, every three, four months. Normally, not much, $35, $40, but it all adds up. All right, next one. Save as much of your tax refund as possible and choose to receive your tax refund via direct deposit. You can split it between a maximum of three different accounts. So you can put some in your checking, some in your savings, uh, at least. And you can also choose to use part of your refund to purchase a U.S. savings bond. Yes, they still have those, and they're a great investment. Number 12, join a retirement plan, like a 401k or a 403b plan, if your employer offers one and deducts the money from your paycheck. Now, most employers will match up to 50 cents of each dollar you contribute. That match amount is free money. Number 13, do your homework if you decide to purchase investments. Know what you are investing in and get professional advice if you need it. You should typically have at least two to six months of emergency cash savings before you begin in investing in investment products that are not federally insured. Number 14, reinvest the dividends of any stocks you own to purchase more stock. Now, some companies offer an easy way to do this called the Dividend Reinvestment Program, or DRIP. This process grows your investment faster, similar to compounding, which we'll talk about in a couple minutes. And last, uh, another idea. Join an investment club if you're interested in learning about investing. 
Now, investment clubs are groups of people who work together to understand the process and the value of investing, even small amounts of money, sometimes as little as 5 to $10. All right, so those are just some saving tips. You now have some ideas on how to save, many of which, again, you can probably use right now or make it your New Year's resolution to start, if nothing else, in a couple days at the beginning of the year. All right. How your money can grow. We're going to talk about how to grow your money, what you can do. Now, making regular payments to yourself, even in small amounts, can add up over time. The amount your money grows depends on the interest earned and the amount of time you leave it in the account. We're going to talk about interest. Most people know what interest is, but we're just going to go through it very briefly. Interest is an amount of money banks or other financial institutions pay you for keeping money on deposit with them. It is second, it is normally expressed as a percentage, you know, a half a percent, one percent, two percent interest rate. And it's calculated based on the amount of money in your account. For example, if you have $1,000 stashed away under your mattress for a year, it will still be $1,000 at the end of the year, right? It's not going to earn interest, provided that it hasn't been lost or stolen. Your mattress is not paying you interest. But if you maintain a balance of that $1,000 in a savings account for one year, and the bank pays, you know, maybe very minimal, a half of 1% on interest on the savings account, at the end of the year, you'll have $1,005, $1,000 the original plus $5 interest. All right, not much, but still, at least it wasn't sitting under the mattress, and you're $5 ahead of where you were last year. All right, now let's talk about the power of compounding interest. Okay. All right, compounding or compounding is how your money can grow when you keep it in a financial institution that pays interest. When the bank compounds the interest in your account, you earn money on the previously paid interest in addition to the money in your account. Not all savings accounts so are created equal. That is because interest can be compounded daily, monthly, or annually. It, it, it varies on the bank and the financial institution, all right? And we're going to talk about that here in just a minute. All right, and that kind of gets to annual percentage yield, which we're going to talk about next, the APY. Another important concept you need to know about is the APY, in the annual percentage yield. It reflects the amount of interest you will earn on a yearly basis and is expressed as a percentage. The APY does include the effect of compounding. The more often your money compounds, the higher the APY and the more interest you will receive. When comparing different accounts, you should always compare the APYs of the savings products, not the interest rates. And please note that the interest you earn is considered income, and you may have to pay taxes on it. You might have to pay a little bit to Uncle Sam on it. Make sure you ask the bank's customer service representative for the truth in saving disclosures. These disclosures will list the APY and other important information um, that, that you will need. All right. Moving on. All right, there's another important concept that you should know about when it comes to how your money can grow. And we're going to talk about that for a minute. It's called the Rule of 72. Okay? The Rule of 72 basically is a formula that lets you estimate how long it will take for your savings to double in value. Now, this calculation assumes that the interest rate remains the same over time. Here's how you calculate it. Divide 72 by the current interest rate to estimate the number of years it will take to double your initial savings amount. Here's an example. If you invest $50 in a savings account at a 4% interest rate, it will take about 18 years for your initial savings of $50 to double. 72 divided by 4%, 18 years. You can also estimate the interest rate you would need to double your money within a set number of years. Here is an example of how this works. Again, if you put $500 into an account, that you want to double in 12 years, you will need an interest rate of 6%. How do we get that? Again, 72 divided by 12 equals 6%. All right, 
We're going to do an example here again, one more. If you want your savings account to double in value in 20 years, what would the interest rate, what interest rate, excuse me, would the account need to have? All right, so you want it to double in the value in 20 years. Um, we've got the answer right there. Uh, 72 divided by 20 is how we figure it out, and it equals 3.6%. All right, now that you know about the benefits of savings, the tips, and how money can grow between interest, compound interest, and the rule of 72, let us wrap up this part by looking at the different types of savings options available. All right, now here we go. Here's some savings options. There are two basic ways to save money. Open a savings account or invest, or both. The important difference between the two is that savings accounts are federally insured and investments are not. With a savings account, you make money by earning interest. The bank pays you for the opportunity to use your money, and your money is safe and you do have easy access to it normally. The Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, FDIC, insures your money in insured financial institutions up to the maximum amount allowed by law. The National Credit Union Administration, if you belong to a credit union, insures your money at, again, insured credit unions. This means that if your financial institution goes out of business and you cannot, and they cannot pay you your money, the FDIC or the NCUA will make sure that you receive it up to the insurance limit. The FDIC, a great little tool, has an online tool called Electronic Deposit Insurance Estimator, or ED. It lets you calculate the insurance coverage of your accounts at each FDIC insured institution and you can find ED online at www.myfdicinsurance.gov. Okay, let's look at savings, three savings products available at most banks. We're gonna talk about money market account, a certificate of deposit, commonly known as a CD for short, and a statement savings account. Now you might be familiar with some of these, but let's see if you can match the name of the account with the description. So here's the first one. This is an account in which you leave your money for a set period of time, maybe six months, one, two, five years. This period of time is called a term. You cannot make deposits or withdrawals during the term. You usually earn a higher rate of interest than with a regular savings account. The longer you promise to keep your money in the account, the higher the interest rate. You will have to pay a fee if you withdraw your money before the term has ended. Anybody guess right? That is a certificate of deposit or a CD. Okay. The second one, this account usually pays a higher rate of interest and is usually requires a higher minimum balance to earn interest than a regular savings account does. This account pays a higher rate of interest for higher balances. It does not have a fixed term and you can make deposits and withdrawals. So which one is this? It's a money market account. All right. Number three, uh, this account pays interest on your balance, and you may be required to maintain a minimum daily balance. A lower minimum deposit is usually required to open this type of an account. And obviously, that's the last one left. That's the last one left a statement savings account. Now with these savings products, you will likely receive periodic statements from your financial institution. And as always, whenever you get a statement, remember to always check your bank records and statements to ensure that they are accurate. All right, we're also, we're gonna wrap up today by talking about three special accounts that financial institutions offer. There are three special accounts that will also help you save money. The individual development account commonly referred to as an IDA for short, which is usually available through nonprofits uh, rather than banks. Second is an electronic transfer account or an ETA. And third is the 529 college savings plan. All right, so let's get right into it and wrap it up. The individual development account or IDA. These are matched savings accounts. When an account is matched, it means that another organization, maybe a foundation, a corporation, or a government entity, agrees to add money to your account to match the money you deposit and save. So 
Organizations will sometimes match the money people save in IDAs to encourage low-income families to save money on a regular basis. Very common. And IDAs are based on the concept that asset building is necessary to break the cycle of poverty and to help families become financially independent. Asset building basically refers to people purchasing or holding items that will help them financially in the future. Organizations involved in IDA programs want to help low-income families become self-sufficient. So how do I use an IDA? If you open an IDA, the money must be used for a specific purpose. Now some allowable purposes include job training, college education, a small business startup, or a home purchase. Now there are a few programs that will allow you to save for other purposes. However, most programs will only offer accounts for the purposes listed above because they, all those are likely to increase your future financial security. How do IDAs work? Each IDA program is a little different, so you must ask the person who runs the program in your area about the details. However, all IDA programs have many similar features, um, including, one, IDA programs are generally run by local community-based organizations. That's good. It's local in your area. Second, they help to recruit eligible people into the program and usually organize the required training sessions for the participants. Third, most IDA programs require that the participants take a certain number of financial education courses. And next, your reward is the education you receive and the money that is added to your account at the end of the program. All right, now how do you open an IDA? They may not be available in every community. Let me say that first. But if you are interested, you can do a couple of things. You can check the following websites to search for programs by state. And here it is, www.idanetwork.org. Or you can ask a local community action agency or other community groups and bankers if they know of any programs in your area. All right, so that's an IDA. Great, great account. Second one we're going to talk about is an electronic transfer account, also known as an ETA. An ETA basically is a low-cost account that provides federal payment recipients with the opportunity to receive their federal payments through direct deposit. It's offered only through federally insured banks, thrifts, and credit unions. Now, who is qualified to open an ETA? Anyone who receives any of the following federal payments can take advantage of an ETA. If you get Social Security, Supplemental Security Income, or SSI, Veterans Benefits, federal employee salary or retirement, or railroad retirement payment. Those are all qualified to open an ETA. How does an ETA work? It is a voluntary program for both the consumer and the financial institution. Banks, thrifts, and credit unions that partner with the U.S. Treasury to provide the ETA offer an account that features the following, typically a monthly fee of $3 or less. Also, at least four cash withdrawals and four balance inquiries per month and no additional charge. It offers no minimum balance except as required by any state law. Debit cards are offered typically by many institutions. Of course, it offers a monthly statement, and it offers the same consumer protections as other account holders. Now, some banks may offer more or better services for their ETA program, for example, you might have the option of depositing other types of payments into the ETA account. Some institutions may also pay interest. How do you open an ETA? You want to find a participating financial institution in your area by doing one of the two things. You can access the website, which is www.eta-find.gov, or you can call 1-888. 382-3311, that toll-free number. And participating banks and credit unions must open an account for you regardless of your credit history, unless you've had previously held an ETA that was closed because of fraud. All right, college savings plans today. All right, um, why is it important to save for college? I, I think we all know the answer to that, but uh, according to the U.S. Census Bureau statistics, people with a college degree can earn over 60% more on average than those with only a high school diploma. Over a lifetime, that's more than a million dollar gap in earning potential. 
So obviously it's, it's wise to consider getting an education beyond high school. So what is this 529 plan? It is an education savings plan operated by a state or an educational institution. It is designed to help families set aside funds to pay for future college costs. There are two kinds of plans, a prepaid tuition and savings. And every state, every state offers at least one kind of a 529 plan. All right, let's talk about first the 529 prepaid tuition plan. Prepaid tuition plans allow savers to purchase units of college education at participating colleges and universities for future tuition expenses. Now, some higher education institutions also offer their own 529 prepaid programs that allow you to target your tuition prepayment to the sponsoring institution or group of institutions. Now be sure to understand at what universities the tuition can be used, very important. For state plans, know whether the value of the plan can be used at a private university or state university outside of that state. You may not get the full value of your prepaid account if used at a private or out-of-state school. Check with your local plan administrator for details. All right. The other type is a 529 savings plan. Now, an account holder may choose to invest contributions in several investment options like stocks, bonds, mutual funds, which the college savings plan invests on behalf of the account holder. The full value of the account can be used at an accredited college or university in the United States and also at some foreign institutions. See your, you would see your plan administration, administrator excuse me, for a current list. Some institutions also offer prepaid savings plans. Investments in college or savings plans that invest in mutual funds are not guaranteed by state governments and are not federally insured. Keep that in mind. Some states are now offering 529 college savings plans options that are FDIC insured. You want to always carefully consider the plan's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing any money in them. What are the advantages of a 529 plan? Number one, investments grow tax deferred, and distributions are not subject to federal tax and often state tax if they are for eligible college costs of the beneficiary. Second, plan assets are professionally managed by either by the state's treasury office or by an outside investment firm hired as a program manager. And third, everyone is eligible. There is no income limitations or age restriction. All right. Other than those, what are some other ways to save for college? You can buy U.S. savings bond to save for college. This is an easy way to do it through automatic payroll deductions, and earnings may be tax-exempt if qualified. And you might also want to consider studying in-state and commuting to college from home to lower tuition, room, and board costs. All right, so that's going to wrap up our first part of this on pay yourself first on savings. Remember those savings tips we talked about, the start your savings if you haven't already. Great time, first of the year, to start that, to be committed to that. Remember those different types of interest, compound interest, savings plans. Um, that's going to wrap it up for today. We thank you for joining us. Next month we're going to pick up with pay yourself first, and we're going to talk about the different types of investments. And we certainly hope you enjoyed our webinar today. Again, we look forward you to you joining us next month for part two of this. And in the meantime, save, save, save. Um, for useful money tips and articles, remember, check us out and like us on Facebook at www.facebook.com slash community credit counselors. Or you can follow us on Twitter at CCCI Tweet. All right, well, I hope everybody has a happy new year and a safe new year and had a great holiday season. And this is Paul Usowitz with Community Credit Counselors. We thank you for joining us today again, and we'll see you next year and next month. Have a great day.